G'day guys, Moose here, and I know exactly what you're thinking. This is a kick-ass chair, and I've done a video for it, but we need to make a kick-ass table. Sawdust and chrome. Sawdust and chrome. Everybody loves. Sawdust and chrome. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is Adirondack furniture, and we're going to make a table that matches this set of this chair in particular. Um, again, I'd argue that the table is a smidge easier to do, and a few less tools are required, um, a little bit less materials, and um, depending on what you're up to uh, or what you need, um, might be worth doing first. Either way, obviously, I don't mind. Um, Again, depending on your budget, materials, um, here at school we just do them out of the pine because it's a nice soft timber, um, it's relatively cheap, I say relative, all timber's getting expensive, and it's nice and easy on our tools. Um, so it's a good one here at school, the, my students love it, um, and we always do the table and the chair as a set eventually. So, turn it up to what you want to do. Um, I'll upload the plans um, like I always do. I'll go through the tools. I'm very lucky today. I've got my uh, son here, Brocky, and um, we're going to build this chair, to, uh, build the table together. So uh, let's get into it. Again, if you love what we're up to, please hit all the buttons that you're meant to. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, let's go. All right, before we get into it, um, please, most of all, make sure you're nice and safe. Make sure you've got your safety glasses, um, earmuff, earmuffs, everything that's required to look after stuff that we can't grow back. Um, Brock's here, he's got his gear as well. First thing, uh, we'll go through the plans um, as we go, but basically we're going to build it in two sections. We'll do the bottom section first, all the frame and rails, um, get that locked away, put it to the side, and then we'll do the top separately. Um, I'll go through, I've done it a few times now, so there's a few tips along the way to make sure your table is kind of flat, doesn't rock, uh, is the right proportions, the correct sizes it's meant to be, and then a couple of safety things I'll point out as we go. Alright, let's get into it. If you're ever nervous or worried about any of the equipment, in my, um, my links in the... I don't even know what you call that section. Bio. Bio. In the bio, sorry, I'm a bit new to this. In the bio, there's going to be all the links to use all the equipment. Um, videos. I'll show you how to use the cordless drills, the um, drop saws, the band saws. I'll explain the difference between all the drill bits that we use. There's really nothing to be worried about or concerned about. Honestly, I can teach anyone to use anything, so uh, stick with me and you'll be fine. All right, for the bottom section, most of the timber is all 90 by the, this factory size, the hardware store size. Um, ours is 18. Anything kind of 90 by, anything close to 18 is fine. All right, we'll start cutting it up. Brock can tell me the sizes. <coughs> um, how long are the legs, Brock? 390. <coughs> Bigger voice. 390. Uh, can you wear those? You need four of them. Obviously. How many do I need? Four. <laughs> Alright, what's next? Mm, side aprons. You need two of them. 790. So we've just done the legs, they're all 390. Uh, we've got the side rails and side aprons, I think they call it. Uh, side. So side aprons and the end aprons and the stretches are the bottom ones. So there's 790 and these both are 450s. You need two of them. What are cleats? These. Yeah, they're at the top. And then four triangles. Yes. And then pull it Yeah. Uh, should we do the triangles then? Uh -huh. What do you need? Like chunky stuff? Actually, I think I've got spares. 
Are the corner blocks? Um, because I'm organised. Because <laughs> I'm organised and I'm awesome. Um, I had some cut already. This is 45 by 90. Um, it's just framing timber. Um, cut on the 45. If you can imagine, I just kind of cut them apart on the 45. So. While Brocky's putting wood back, so they're our sides, side aprons, our end aprons, our end stretches, so they're the same size, they're 450s, 790s, and four legs, three 90s. three 90s, and our blocks. So in the next section, um, as long as your legs are exactly the same size, a mill or two, doesn't matter as long as the same. Kind of the same, same with the 45s and the rails. As long as they're all exactly um, the same as each other, a little bit here and there won't make a difference. Next section. Um, so it's either up to you how fussy you want to be. You could go sand all these components uh, right now um, these are all pretty good. It's probably a little bit of overkill, especially if it ends up outside and you're going to paint it. No one's going to know if it was sanded to 400 or not. Um, but the next bit is the countersinking. Apologies, you can't see our faces. Um, Brock's, I don't know, he's got a cute one, so you probably miss it, but mine not so much. Um, we'll do the marking out. Okay, got a pencil. <clears throat> Again, these are squares. Uh, sharp pencil always. And we'll do the long rails first. So on your plan, I'm gonna give you guys a PDF of this plan. Um, we're gonna do number one, box number one, but the marking out on the long rails, on the side apron, is just here number two square. So we're going to go through that together. All right, Brock. Yep. So how far down are the screws? How far down and how far up? 12. 12 and 12? Yep. And how far in from the edge? 25. Perfect. You do that end and I'll do my end. Um, I think it might be a boy thing. Um, you only need to give yourself kind of little marks where the cross is, where, where you have to counter sunk, counter sink. Um, Brock's given us a good teaching moment. If you put a line in the wrong spot, make sure you scribble it out. Don't get confused. Um, so make sure you do a little scribble or you make note that this is not the line I want. And we've got our three marks there. So that's really good. Next one. Uh, while we're at it, we're going to mark them all out. So the legs, the legs are the only marking out they need is where the bottom rail, the stretcher, is attached to the legs. So I need two countersunk marks there. So number five tells you where they are. Brocky, tell me where they are. 15 up and 175 up. Um, and where do you reckon it has to be? Centre. Centre, perfect. Teaching, uh, teaching tip, hot tip. Depending on what your timber's like, ours is all pretty uniform, pretty nice both sides. If yours isn't, make sure the bit that you countersink on is facing out. We want them to be the bits we show off. You do yours. When you're using your squares, please make sure your square, I know it's obvious, is butted up against your timber. There should always be a way you can have your square with a good purchase on the timber um, in, in, a, in one of the positions, if, even if you flip it or whatever is required. Need 
So now we're going to do the end apron, the end of it, the um, rail at the top. So you'll see in number three, sorry, I don't even know if you can read this, but box three tells me where I want to put the screws in the end of the um, rails. So I use this one here. On here, it's got 19 down, 19 up, that's perfect. And it's telling you to come in nine and a half from the edge of the timber. <coughs> I would come in whatever the thickness of your timber is. So ours is 18, so we're going to come in 9. You want to be halfway. And when we start putting it together, it'll make sense. So if you need to, you've got your half. And you can transfer that across. It should be about 9. Perfect. You can do that one. Sounds not. Again, you can check it. They're pretty good. Pretty good. Looks the same. Now on this one, um, it doesn't tell you in the plan, but what I've been doing in the past, so these are the rails on the ends down the bottom, the stretches. And what I get my kids to do is give yourself a centre line on the ends. Uh, measure it or use a marking gauge, whatever you need. And you know how on our legs, we came up the 115 and the 175. So if my mass is any good, it should be 60. So those holes are 60 mil apart. On the end grain, I get my students to give me a center line and drill, and I'll mark two holes 60 mil apart and make sure they're in the center. I hope you can see it. My eyes are a smidge trash, so I can't actually see what you can see on that little screen. So that should get us out of trouble. The last one is the corner blocks. Um, in the plan, it's number eight, diagram eight, tells you what's required. Um, this one kind of depends, you can follow that exactly, but make sure you use the exact length screws they use. So for us, I'll show you what we do. So this is number eight. And this is our outside, or the face we need to put the countersunk in. So Brock, you can do yours. Um, you gotta come in 40 from the edge. I need it in the center. You can just eyeball the center of this one. It's not super crucial. But the next bit, I'll explain it to you and I'll tell you why. So if you imagine, so I've got that line all the way. So that's in 40 from the edge, 40 from the edge. Where it hits here at the top, I'll show you what we do. If I use my square as an example, we don't follow that one. And then on the 45, so I've got my two angles there, we split the difference. So that's where a sliding bevel comes into play. This is the angle I want to put my countersunk screws on. So they were my two 90s and 45s. I'm going to split the difference. So that's what I want. So that's set up, ready to go. So I'm going to mark them all out. Making sure you go kind of out. Don't go in. This 
This line is so I can eyeball it with the cordless when I'm ready. Um, the angle I want. Because it's a little bit more important than you realise. If you get the angle a little bit kind of skew with, um, your chance of putting screws through the block, through your rail, and out the side. Uh, that looks a little bit horrible. All right, next bit, countersink. Good job, Ben. For the next part, the countersink. Uh, depending on what you've got at home, will decide if you can use a drill press or you've got to use your cordless drills. Um, I'm a massive fan of the drill press because it does a better job, it's dead straight, but most importantly, you can adjust the depth that the screw, uh, the countersunk bit will go down. So we want it to be nice, uniform. We don't want to bury screws. Um, so I'm a big fan of it. I'll show you both, but we will do most of ours, to be honest, on the drill press. Um, that's it, let's get into it. So we're gonna do our countersink in here in the drill press, and I'll show you most of it we'll do here. I'll do a couple with a cordless. All right, let's go. First of all, put your countersunk bit in. Tweak it so it's nice and tight. Depending on what your drill press is like at home, um, I want to set the depth stop on it. So I want, I want to tell it where I want it to stop. So, so make sure you know how to do yours, and I'll show you. Oh, and this is a piece of scrap. So we'll do it on scrap first. So I hope you can see it. We're going to do it so there's just a tiny bit of the countersunk. You see at the top of the timber, and they all look exactly like that. The rest is easy. All right, that was perfect. Brocky did great. We'll do one of these um, with the cordless. a young fella I didn't really care about beards back then but as I got older it really started to grow on me <laughs> <laughs> all right you know what to do rate it out of 10 leave us a comment all right let's go we've got work to do all right there's nothing clever about it so it's not tricky if you don't have a drill press but uh, have a piece of scrap underneath so we don't damage our bench too much um, when you use the drills, whether it's a cordless or one of these torque drills, um, I tell my, uh, my students to make sure everything's kind of in line with their shoulder. Uh, and you've got to be nice and, kind of, nice and upright. Um, if you're not upright, you'll damage, you'll snap your um, drill bits. So nice and upright. So just take your time, because you've got to control where it stops. Um, I'd rather you go not, I'd rather you take it easy and not go far enough. Do you want to do the last one? Yep. 
Um, while Brock was drilling, I started getting rid of all the, the pencil lines. Even though we're probably going to paint this, I don't know. I'm a, I might a little bit different. I want everything to be a bit nice and neat. While we're here, the last bit of counter sinking we're going to do is the corner blocks. So this one. Um, if you can use a vise, can you see me, bro? You're just like in that corner. Do me aim it at you? Yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my lines is where I want to, um, I want my countersink bit to go. So I'm going to make sure they're nice and upright to me in the vise. So same deal. I know where I want to start in our cross and I want to be nice and straight, nice and upright. So for this one, you want it so it just pokes through the bottom. All right, for this one, we're gonna start gluing up the bottom frame. My hot tip for this is make sure you got all your gear. I'll go through it in a second. But you'll see us use the bench, a nice square bench, to help me keep everything square, make sure my corners are all perfect. So we use the bench to our advantage. But what are you going to need? Um, there's a tiny bit more marking out. I'll talk you through it as we do it, for, so I know where the long rails sit on the legs. Um, I need some soft clamps. Um, just so an extra pair of hands, I can clamp stuff to the bench where it needs to be. Glue. The screws aren't a strong joint. Screws hold stuff together basically until our glue dries. So make sure you glue and screw every component that we do. Screws. Um, I can't, I've got to be honest, it bugs me when the students here at school ask me what size screws I need to use. Um, both our pieces of timber are 18 mil wide, 18 mil thick. So if you've got a screw that's more than that, doubled, and your screw pokes out the end of it, uh, it's obviously too long. So we're gonna use, we're using 32s, 32s, 35s. You wanna get as much purchase as you can without poking screws through. So it's important when you're using your drill, make sure you're not screwing them um, too deep. So we've countersunk them for a reason. We wanna hit those countersunks. We don't really need to go any deeper than that. Um, that's it. So, watch us get into it. Let's get into it. All right, make sure your two legs, your two countersunk holes, are at the bottom. So, that's my pair for this table. We need our rails to sit 25 mil from the outside edge. Has to be 25 because that gives me room for our side rails and we have a little bit of an indent. So mark a 25. You just need a little line, you don't need much. Oops, sorry, wrong side. So I should have 25 from that edge, not that one. So 25 from the outside. Make sense, B? Yeah. So first thing is clamp one of your legs exactly to the corner of your bench. Um, Here? It's gonna be in the way. Can you get it there? Well, it's still in the right, see? You can put one on top. Oh, no, you can't. Not just yet.
Uh, at the other end, we've got our leg here, basically just for support at the moment, so it keeps this rail flat. So double check you're happy. I know that's the bottom of the legs, I know that's the bottom. If you need to, write yourself more notes than you need. Um, glue. Just a squiggle, you don't need a massive amount. And what I like to do, it's up to you, you can use as many clamps as you want. So I've got it in line with that pencil mark, that 25 in. Brock, you can't see it. So we've clamped it to the corner of the bench. I've got my 25 mark there, and I'm flush with the top here. At the moment, as long as the other end's close, that's fine. Um, put your first screw in. It doesn't really matter which one. Again, control the speed. You control it and want the screw heads to be just a mil or two below the surface. I can leave that. For the next bit, make sure your board is in line with the bench. So make sure you're happy where it is. If you want, you can put that second clamp on. And then you can do the other two. So while there's one, we can still pivot it around. Perfect amount of glue is if you get a little bit squeezed out, um, but not too much. Right, my next hot tip is when you're putting the screws in make sure you put a good amount of pressure on your board as well because you need them to squeeze up like a sandwich as the screw goes in so you don't have a gap here we don't want gaps there if you get a gap there it just means you've got to undo the screw put a bit more pressure a bit more clamping if you need to use more clamps and um screw it back together so that's nice Alright, for the next section we're going to put on the end rails. So it's the ends, top rails. Um, here at school we've got all the bench vices everywhere, so that's what we'll use. I'll show you that. Um, it can be done just on the normal workbench, but you might need an extra pair of hands. Um, and because we can, we're going to start using the longer screws. So these are 42s I think. Um, they work well for this one. They work well for the bottom rail, and they work well for the corner blocks as well. Um, so, we'll get straight into it. Uh, same again, use your glue. Add a dribble on both surfaces. So for this one it's important that it's flush and then it's flush with the top.
So we're going to flip it. And we'll do the other side. Alright, great so far. Um, if you're keeping up, well done, I love you for it. Once you've got this frame together, chuck it on your bench, a good sign, a good early sign is if it's on your bench and it doesn't really rock, that means you're winning. Good job. Next bit we're going to do is the rails down the bottom. And I'm going to show you just uh, a little tip because I want you to do pilot holes in here and a little tip with the countersinking bit through um, the backs of the legs so we can see. And while I've got you, the corner blocks. You know how we drilled our, um, our countersunk bits on the angles? With the screws you're going to use, our 42s, if I put the screw where it's going to go, I can see how much is poking out. If I put it on my corner, I can see that that'll be perfect. That gives me about five mil grace. Um, again, glue and screws. Um, that's it, we'll get into it. Leave it or? I can, oh, I'll swing it, yeah, now swing it down. Good shot there. Yeah, yeah perfect. Alright, so we've marked this out. Remember, it's in the centre and they're 60 mil apart because that matches the 60 in our legs. Um, I've got my countersunk drill bit ready to go. All I really need is a pilot hole. I only really need basically just the drill bit, not the countersunk part. Um, but also, I've got a screw. It's far easier. Give yourself a little center punch. Um, then your drill bit won't wander. It goes exactly where you want. The drill's upright next to my shoulder. It's as easy as that. Three more to go. My next hot tip is, you know how we countersunk the legs? I want you to countersunk through the backs as well. It opens up the hole just a little bit further and it makes it easier for us because we kind of have to find those holes blind and uh, it's easier to do. Pretty much the same as what you did on the drill press. I should have maybe have mentioned it at the drill press. We could have done it over there easy. So next one. Um, depending on how good your eyesight is, basically we want to find our pilot holes on the end grain. And I want you to do it by hand. Because you'll feel with that you found it and then you can put the screws in properly. Bro, jump on Do I do the other side? Yep. Can you see? Please be real fussy. Make sure you kind of feel that you found the hole. Sometimes I could use a torch so I can see through it. I can't spin it. You only do it to a point, just to find the hole. How far are yours out? 15 mil. I think that found both of them. Yeah. 
Yeah, I want you to guarantee you've got it because it looks horrible if you miss and you put a screw through and it pokes out or in or splits your timber. Are we gluing these? Oh, good point. Brocky just asked, are we going to glue it? Um, you can. To be honest, end grain and glue isn't fantastic. It's not super strong. Um, I kind of used to, but I kind of really just made a huge mess more than got any kind of structural integrity out of it. Um, so I've just been putting in decent sized screws. Uh, normal deal, you only want it to go about a mil or two below the surface, but you will have to kind of squeeze it up. No, you do too. Check that you don't have a gap on the inside. What is it? You know you're doing well if your table doesn't rock and your corner blocks fit nice and snug in the corners. That means you're doing all right. Please make sure, I swear this is true, first time I did this table, I put my corner block just in the center of the rail and not flush with the top. Please don't do that, don't be that guy. Uh, glue and a clamp. I've got a clamp. Squiggle of glue. Nice and flush with the top. And you should be able to get a clamp on. Sometime. That's good. Is that good? Yeah. Um, sometimes it's a bit tricky to get the screw in on, on the angle. So. Sometimes you've got to move your clamp a little bit left or right. Um, this one is a bit hard to kind of reach around. Uh, can you loosen the clamp a smidge? Good excuse to buy more tools. Get yourself a long Phillips head um, extension. That works perfect around it. Yep. Take the clamp off. Yeah, okay. That's good. We're vibing? Yeah, vibing. All right. Spin it around. Until the camera sit back and relax and enjoy the fun. <laughs> <laughs> this is where you can sit back and enjoy the funk. Bottom's done, rock solid, very happy with it. Brocky did a great job, and it's not a bad idea for it to kind of let the glue dry overnight so it's rock solid tomorrow for the tabletop. Um, again, we've run out of time. We're gonna duck off to footy training. Um, I think that's it.
Thank you. If you're up to this stage today, well done. Um, we love that you guys are involved, and um, we'll uh, see you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Do you know why you never see elephants hiding in trees? It's because they're so good at it. Rate that gag. Leave a comment. Awesome, welcome back guys. Moose here. Today we're gonna to finish off our table. We're gonna do the tabletop. Super easy, I'll give you a couple tips along the way. Um, that's it. Let's get into it. Oh, I got Brocky as well, so uh, let's go. All right guys, we're gonna work on the top. What they call the top slats, there's eight of them. We've, our material is 65 wide. We've gotta thin it down a little bit to 60, nice and easy. We need eight of those. Then we need two of the cleats. They're 500 and they're 1200. If you're unsure again, all the dimensions Go to um, diagram six, it's perfect. We'll, um, we'll cut it up and we'll play on the thicknesser. If you're not lucky enough to have a thicknesser, you can get small bench top versions that aren't too expensive. A good excuse to grab some kit. Um, but if you had to, for argument's sake, stick with the 65 wide, um, we could work with that. You would just have to adjust your spacing later on so you can get the width of the table that we're after or something close to. Don't sweat it, you'll work it out. All right, now we're getting into it. Eight twelves, two at 500. Now we'll go play on the thickness. You don't have to thickness these down, it doesn't really matter. With the 1200 lengths, if you're a little bit out, it actually doesn't matter too much on the table because we curve the ends anyway. So. Uh, don't sweat it, don't recut anything. All right, let's go thickness. Thicknessing done, I'm going to show you how we assemble the tabletops, the simplest way you can do it. But I've got a hot tip. And you may need a really good friend. A good mate of mine put together this for me. It is a box of different sized MDF spacers. I've got my threes, fives, nines, twelves, uh, and really, really skinny ones. For this project, we're using the five mil. I'm uh, sorry, the six mil spaces. Um, super handy, even if you had to kind of cut up a few six mil bits. Um, whatever you could use for spacing would be perfect for this project. You'll see why in a second. All right. For this bit, Brock is going to help me out. You need your glues, your drills. Make sure the screws you use because we're attaching. We've got the two 500 braces are attached to our 1200 pieces. So make sure your screws are the right length. The ones we use are 35s. All right, we'll get into it. I might play a bit of rock music through this one for you. So the next bit of these stretches, these have to be attached to the, um, to the slats. If, it, if, if you can picture it, this is the bottom of the tabletop. So with your stretcher, make sure it's in the center. So you should have about a centimeter gap on both sides. Does that look good, Brock? Yep. And depending on how fussy you are, we want one countersunk screw hole in the center of each of these slats. Um, I would argue that your eyeball should be pretty close can you do the centers? To mark it out where the centers go.
I'll turn the thing. I'll be back. Let my square ball. So, combine them both up. Do a little line on both of them. Making sure it's flush at the end. Keep hold of it. As long as you're close to the centre, um, you've got nothing to worry about. Now we just need a line just in the middle. Don't mark them out too hard. Uh, sorry, don't press too heavy with your pencil. It's just more sanding to get rid of later. This can stay where it is. This is okay for now. We'll go quickly countersink these. On diagram six, it gives you a center mark on top and tells you to go 420 each way. And that's where these cleats go. I want you to check the 420, two 420s gives you 840. I want you to check that <clears throat> Can you see that? Yeah. Hang on a bit. I need you to check, because I've been caught out in the past, that from very outside edge to outside edge, so this one is exactly like 842. Um, give yourself a centimetre. So add five mil to the, to the 420. Um, it doesn't make a massive difference if it's a smidge wider. So the rail smith sits a smidge on the outside. Uh, I, would, I would prefer it than having it the other way around. Halfway 600, just checking 600. So we're going to go 425. Four twenty-five each way. What do you want to do that side? So do 600 first in the center. Mark 425, and then flip it and do the same. Oh, it's rule. Don't rule this line too heavy. But please. Mark the side you want your, um, your stretcher to go on. We have to move our blocks down a smidge. So the crosses, because I want to make sure that when you glue it, you put your stretcher on that side of the line, because I've had kids in the past put it on this side. So make sure that's exactly where you want it. Perfect. Glue. Drill. Please make sure you grab the right size screws. With the glue, 
Uh, I don't mind if you do little blobs here or little squig squiggles here. But a little bit of glue, like I was saying earlier. The glue gives it the strength, not so much the screws. You got about a centimetre? Yeah, that's good. When you put your screws in, make sure you can get a bit of weight behind it. Get it close to your shoulder, nice and upright. Do you want to do that one? And please don't bury your screws too far, because we've only got five mil to play with. We don't want to poke them through the front. Yeah, go for it. See how there's a gap? A bit more? No, so I'll back it up. If you're putting the book, wait, wait. If you're putting the screws in and there's a little gap between your stretcher and the board, um, I would, the ideal is you back the screw off a little bit, a bit more pressure down and put the screw back in. It's not such a great idea to just keep burying the screw because then you'll poke it through. Gather it. More pressure on it. Yeah. I just want to show you one thing. Let's say you struggled, you, you couldn't get that gap, you couldn't, you couldn't, um, uh, what's the word I want? Eliminate the gap, you were struggling with it. Apologise you can't see our faces, but this is more important. Um, let's say there's a bit of a gap here and I just couldn't get rid of it. What you can do is undo it. with one of your spacers, poke the spacer just underneath, so it's only sitting on one of the strips that's sitting on it. It'll probably, it should squeeze up the gap, and it'll be fixed. Perfect, we'll do the other end. You can start up there. Right? All right, we've had a teaching moment. We have a massive box of screws with 35 millimeter screws. And because the boys, uh, the boys and um, my students here at school use the boxes as well, um, this is a random long screw. So I've got a feeling we might have punched it through the top. No dramas, easy to fix. Oh, good question. Brock, could you just ask me who made me all the spaces? Very good, mate. Shout out to Watto. Champion block. Now, at this point, my hot tip is, uh, I don't mind if you take the clamp off, but I want you to leave it. It needs to dry in this position. I've had um, projects in the past go a little bit astray, because it's only one screw in each of these um, slats, exaggerate, if I took the clamp off and you could skew it, and if you skew it too far, what was nice and straight, um, in worst case scenario, doesn't fit on our table tops, oh, on our table frames. So, the next part of it is the curve on it anyway, I'll explain it next, um, next time we're back, but, I would actually just leave this exactly as it is, let it dry, make sure it's nice and solid and nice and square, most important. Um, I reckon that'll do us for today. Uh, thanks again. Oh, I was gonna mention, um, in, the, in my bio, in the links below, there's heaps of videos on how to use the drills, um, the cordless drills in particular, so I don't want you to be nervous about anything. Um, Teaching Brocky, he's been using the drills for a few years and he's a young, gorgeous fella. Um, 
So pl please don't be nervous, please don't be standoffish, please don't be hesitant about any of the gear. Um, I can teach you guys to use all of it. So if you're unsure, watch the little videos. They only go for five minutes or so. Um, this perfect, I let it dry overnight. Final words from Brock, because he loves this bit. Um, I don't know. Send us off. Just send it? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. If you love us, click all the buttons. Hey guys, welcome back. Moose here. I've got Brocky, and this is the last session, and this will get us to the end and finishing our table. I'm going to show you two different ways. We're going to put a slight curve on these, on both ends, aesthetically. I hope that's the right word. I reckon it looks a little bit better. Uh, I'll show you two ways. Depending on what you've got at home, you pick the one that uh, best suits you. Um, if you need to, grab some more tools, best thing in the world. Uh, that's it, let's get into it. Oh, thanks for watching. If you like what we're up to, don't forget to click the likes and subscribes and um, tell your mates. All right, let's go. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is put our curve. Because I've done this project a few times, I actually have a template that I use for my curves. And um, it sits flush against the rail and you just trace. Nothing clever about it. If you don't have a template um, and you've got a mate to help you out, I reckon it's just as easy to use your eye and bend a ruler. Uh, can you trace that in? And the first one I'm going to show is with the jigsaw. So be nice and safe, clamp it. Uh, I've got my glasses. I forgot my uh, earmuffs. I'll be back in a sec. Oh, Brock is getting. Sorry about the noise when we fire this up. Just remember, make sure you cut just outside the line. So we're on the waist side of the line. The bit I don't want to keep, I want to be just uh, up against the line. The last bit I can't quite get because of the plate on the jigsaw and it hits our brace. So I'll just flip it. That's the first half done. It's pretty much perfect for sanding. I might tweak it just a tiny bit um, with some 240. For the next one, I'll show you how to use your bandsaw. And I'm gonna pretend you've got an awesome workshop and you've got a belt linisher of some sort. Um, this one is good to do in pairs, just because it's a bit awkward, um, the length of the tabletop. So we'll move into the machine room and Brocky can help me out. All right, let's go. Bansels, I reckon bansels are the best. If there's anything you're unsure about, any of the equipment that we use, please check out my other videos. I've got some kind of very short, sharp um, introductions to some of the equipment and how to always stay safe. Trust me, I can teach anyone to do anything. Uh, I'll rephrase that, anything in our workshops. Um, all right, we'll get into it. Make sure you set your guards, make sure you're nice and safe.
All right, if you've done a good job, um, put a blanket down or carpet tiles or something to protect the top. And if your frame, frame fits in the rails in the tabletop, um, you're winning, good job. The last bit's really easy, but I will change the camera angle because you need a countersink into, you know our, our chunky triangle corners uh, in the frame that give it the rigid, rigidity. Um, we're going to countersink into those a certain amount and then just four screws into the top. Um, nice and easy. I normally don't countersink these while like everything's kind of apart um, when we've got it set up in the drill press because just in case I want to make sure where my countersunk hole goes it's actually into a rail. Um, I know I'd be unlucky but I'd hate to hit um, one of the gaps between the slats. All right, so I'll show you how to do it. All right, we'll demonstrate one of them and then um, you can see us do the rest in fast forward. So make sure you can't be too close to the corner because I need my drill to make it uh, to fit, but I don't want to hit, I don't want to hit the screw we've got in here and I don't really want to hit any of the rails with the drill. So it's got to be somewhere around there. Because I've done it a few times now, I know the distance I've got to put the countersunk bit in is pretty much to the end of, I guess, the bigger kind of shaft section just here. Um, I know that because, I'll, I'll show you how to check it later, but just from previous experiences. Nice and straight. Now the screws we put in, we're doing, you know how we had the 42s earlier? So making sure this is lined up where you need it to be. So it's nice and central. Just till it pulls up nice and tight. You obviously, you know you've gone too far if it's gone through the frame, up through the top, but we need enough purchase into the, in the frame as we can get. So as much as you can get without punching through. All right, that'll work. Uh, now we do the rest. Oh. I'll take that first one out and I'll show you something. So if you want to check your countersunk depth is okay, um, you can take an educated guess, work out where it is, and put a screw in without having the top on. So you can see that's the distance we've gone. So it's poking up about, I don't know, about a centimetre. So we know that that'll be okay. We don't need a massive amount of purchase because the, the top's not going anywhere. So you could suss out what your depth is going to be before. That's about it. Job's complete. Um, what was it about? Five chunky steps. Um, honestly, anyone can do this with a little bit of gear um, and a bit of help from us. Let's go. Yeah. Um, thank you for watching. I hope yours has come out of sh as schmick as ours, and um, you can enjoy it for a long time. All right. Thanks, guys. Peace out.
that's two pieces of furniture that would look pride of place in anyone's front yard, backyard, wherever it ends up. Please don't forget, depending on what your timber you use, um, ours pine, we're going to paint it eventually because it's going to live outside. We're going to do the same in a chair one day too. Thank you so much for uh, going with the journey with us. Um, I hope you learned a few things. I hope, especially hope you bought some new tools and um, keep in touch. Uh, leave comments, do the clicks, the likes, the subscribes, let us know how much you love us or if you think there's things we could do better or suggestions for other projects, that I would love to hear. Um, thank you so much from Brock and I and the rest of our family. Um, to your family, lots of love. Um, bottom's done, rock solid, um, it came up nice and good. I say ums a lot too. <laughs> Sorry guys. Um, did it again. Ah, oh, that's trash. Do you look good? Yes, sexy. Uh, the bottom's all done. The bottom frame, it came up nice and solid. Um, ready for the top now. But unfortunately, we gotta go, we got footy training again. Uh, see you guys later.